Well, good afternoon and welcome to Let Me Ask You, uh, Ministry of Hickory With Presbyterian Church. I'm Stephen Lynn White. I'm a ruling elder here at Hickory With. On my left, Pastor Doug Barcroft. We are answering your questions. You may place them in the uh, comment section below. You may email us. You may call us. We've given those numbers and uh, email addresses out before. We invite you, first of all, tonight to a service at uh, 7 o'clock, which will be led by Tom Champness. He will be going through the book of Ecclesiastes. Our dinner is at 6.15, and if you're a first-time visitor, that meal is free, and it looked pretty good over there, Doug, when I was over there is. just a minute ago. So, so we're still talking about images of Jesus, and are they okay? So, Doug, let me just ask you again, is it okay to have images of Jesus? Well, thanks, Steve, and, and thanks for asking the question one more time. It's been a couple of weeks since we've been with you. Uh, we were in San Antonio. We yeah, had a son. good time over there. We had home. a good time down there. Yeah. So we've been a little bit of a delay in getting to this point today, but here we are again. And uh, in the first two sessions, we tried to lay a, a foundation for the question. Uh, on the surface, it may seem to be a fairly simple question, but we believe that there are some scriptures that uh, bear upon the question, uh, specifically the second commandment that we find in the Ten Commandments. In the first session, uh, we uh, discuss the second commandment and how we believe that that commandment uh, bears upon the answer to this question. And then uh, last session, we discussed the, the role of the moral law in the life of the believer. Mm -hmm. uh, we're never saved by good works. We're never saved by obedience to the law. Uh, but once we are saved, uh, we will want to obey the Ten Commandments. Uh, the Spirit of God comes to live within us, to give us the power and strength that we need to uh, live in a way that's pleasing to God. Uh, Philippians 2 teaches us that he works in us to will and to do uh, for his good pleasure. So it's not like we're on this journey ourselves in our own strength, trying to keep the moral law. Uh, in our own strength and our own power, we have the Holy Spirit of God assisting us, but nevertheless, it does serve as a rule and as a guide in the life of the Christian. Um, and we just kind of believe that that may have been uh, forgotten by many in the church today. And there's a, a lack of familiarity with uh, the Ten Commandments and specifically the Second Commandment uh, that bears on the question that we've been dealing with. Uh, what I want to do tonight is turn to the Bible and turn to Exodus uh, chapter 20, and I want to uh, uh, read the second commandment and then just try to explain it briefly uh, to you this afternoon. It's found in Exodus 20, uh, beginning to read at verse 4. Uh, you shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. Uh, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, uh, but showing steadfast love to those uh, thousands who love me, and keep my commandments. So there's a number of things that we see in the commandment. First of all, we see a, a clear uh, prohibition. It says, you shall not make for yourself a carved image. So God is pretty clear there, isn't he? There's I would a, think so. Yeah, there's a clear uh, prohibition. And it's also helpful to look back in chapter 19 and remind ourselves of just who the God is that makes that prohibition. Uh, in chapter 19, verse 16, it says, On the morning of the third day, uh, there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast so that all the people in the camp trembled. Uh, then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they uh, took their stand at the foot of the mountain. This was Mount Sinai. Uh, now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended on it in fire. Uh, the smoke of it went up like a smoke of a kiln, and the whole mountain trembled greatly. And as the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him in thunder. Uh, the Lord came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. 
And the Lord said to Moses, go down and warn the people, lest they break through to the Lord to look, and many of them perish. Mm. So I think it's very important when we start to consider the commandment that we realize just who the God is who gives the commandment. Mm. He is great, he is mighty, he is holy. Uh, he spoke the word in the entire uh, world and universe uh, came into existence. He is a powerful God, he is holy. And so when this God speaks to us in any way, we should listen uh, but certainly when he gives to us a, a clear prohibition, and this prohibition you see is twofold. Uh, you shall not make a graven image, and you shall not bow, bow down to them or worship them. And then when you go along uh, further in the commandment in verses 5 through 6, you see some uh, uh, clear reasons behind the prohibition. God just does, does not leave the commandment there. Uh, he gives to them and to us some reasons why we need to obey uh, the commandment. If God just speaks a commandment to us, that should be sufficient for us to obey. <laughs> and many of the Ten Commandments are like that. Uh, you think uh, you should not kill, you should not steal, you shall not commit adultery. And we just have the commands there and the prohibitions. But in several of the commandments, uh, there is an addendum to the commandment. And we find that right here. Uh, and I think it's important for us to see uh, the reasons for obedience. Uh, the first thing you see mentioned is that God is a jealous God. Uh, that is, he is uh, jealous for his own glory, uh, and he does not want anything that we do in our worship to detract uh, from his glory and his majesty and his power. Uh, Jesus himself stated in Luke 4, verse 8, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Uh, so God's law, it prohibits us from worshiping uh, false gods or worshiping the true God in a wrong way. But there's also a flip side to this commandment. It's just not a negative prohibition. It is also a positive command for us to worship the true God mm and to worship him in the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, we could get into the regulative principle of worship here, but that's another discussion for another day. Uh, but we take that from the second commandment. Mm -hmm. It's not just a prohibition. It is also this positive injunction and command upon the people of God uh, to worship the true God and worship him in the way that he has prescribed for us in his word. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first reason here is that God is a jealous God uh, and then notice the, the sobering warning here. It says that God visits the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. Um, God sounds pretty serious about mm -hmm. <laughs> the second commandment there, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, and the interesting thing is that while uh, God was giving this command to Moses as he was forbidding uh, idolatry and, and forbidding uh, the people of God to make graven images as this command was given to Moses on the summit of Mount Sinai, mm -hmm. the people of Israel at the base of Mount Sinai were doing the very thing he prohibited. <laughs> and when you look at the history of the nation of Israel, you'll see that uh, they forgot the second commandment on many, many occasions. Yeah, I was going to say a lot. A lot. <laughs> A lot. And so uh, so it's important uh, for us to see that. It is a sobering uh, warning that we find here uh, that God will visit the iniquity of the fathers on the children. And boy, just to interject a little bit of side truth there, the responsibility of fathers to lead their families in worship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're given the responsibility right here to teach their children and to instruct their children and their wives uh, to worship the true God and worship him in the correct way. Mm -hmm. And then finally, a third reason you'll see in, uh, I believe it's verse 6, is that God makes a promise to the ancient Jews and a promise to us. It's a wonderful promise. He says that he will show steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. Uh, so there's an incentive for us to obey this commandment. Mm -hmm. Uh, God says that he will pour out his uh, blessings uh, upon us. Of course, any blessings we receive from him is a gift of his grace. We never deserve those blessings, 
Uh, but nevertheless, there is this doctrine in, in Scripture of rewards that are given to the children of God because of their obedience. And, uh, and we certainly see that here. And so that's it for the foundation uh, and the explanation of the second commandment. Next week, we'll come back and consider what is a graven image. And in doing that, we'll close out our session on this question about pictures of Jesus. And you may want to look ahead to the Westminster Larger Catechism. It's question 109 uh, that will help us in our uh, discussion for our next episode. Fantastic. Thank you, Pastor. All right. Well, again, this is Hickory with Presbyterian Church. We're out here at 2420 Donaldson Road in Eads, Tennessee, technically, but it is the Hickory with community. Tonight, 615, a wonderful meal, 7 o'clock, a study in Ecclesiastes with uh, Dr. Tom Champness. Uh, Sunday morning, our regular worship service, Sunday school at 10, regular worship at 11, and uh, then a Bible study at 4 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. We're going through a book called Communion with God by mm -hmm. John Owen, and the ladies are reading straight through the Bible, mm -hmm. uh, a wonderful thing that my wife and I know your wife is mm -hmm. enjoying as well. Next week, um, our General Assembly will be meeting, the General Assembly for the PCA, right here in Memphis, Tennessee, down at the Renaissance Center. There'll be worship services in the evening, next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. A concert by Indelible Grace on Wednesday night at the Cannon Center. All things that are open and free to the public, and we'd love to see you down there as well. So until next time, this is Let Me Ask You, a ministry of Hickory with Presbyterian Church.